All right, guys, so I'm down out here with Captain Billy Wheat, and he is teaching me how to use the glide bait. I have yet to get a sniff on this thing, as, as far as I know, but uh, he said that this is the time, and he catches big ones, and I trust him, and he's going to show me how to do it. So come along and learn with me. All right. Hopefully we'll have some uh, fruitful results today. Uh, if not, it will still be good technique to learn. So, all right, stick with us. I forgot to tell you, I didn't bring anything but glide baits today. So it's gonna have to work. So this should be interesting. Uh, I'm a little nervous, I'll be honest with you. But uh, yeah, if you're gonna learn a bait, you gotta stick with it. You gotta do it all day so you can learn every bit of it. So, let's see what happens. All right, stick with us. Now, while Billy was parking, I decided to throw my mini glide bait a couple times. Now, I didn't notice this at the time, but when I looked back at the footage later, look what I saw. Plenty of that crap around here. Yeah. Up. That little one. This is a. That's a little bitty one. Yeah, it's a Bass Pro. Is it XPS? Yeah. That's a good bait. It seems like a bit all right. It looks like a knockoff of the uh, S waiver. Yeah. Hooks are little. So you just reel it in slow? Well, I've got a five to one reel on this one. So it's slow. So if you got a fast reel, you wanna go click, click. What you're doing is you're allowing it to move right to left each time on a click. So you click, you click. I hit, see that is the bottom. Probably a hit. You just let it glide real long. Yeah, you go click, and you let it make its turn, then you go click, and it'll make another turn. If you got like a, a five to one reel, when you make a big long cast, uh -huh. you, you can just wind it. If I'm fishing like big grass flats and stuff, I always like to throw a, a lower speed reel because I can throw it and I can just wind them because the lower speed just lets it glide, you know? Yeah. It's a, a really good search tool to have some good glasses doing this too so you can see you know, what goes on yeah but sometimes they'll follow it right up to the boat you're just doing a half turn yeah you go zoom, like, well like a full turn, like, full turn. and what it does is it, here's the thing about gliders you don't want to pull gliders okay like when i say pull i mean you don't want to like use your pull, rod tip. pull them you, you want you want them to be able to stay in like a neutral buoyant state so that, that by clicking it, all you're doing is turning it each time. Okay. They just they just load up and they just hammer it. Yeah, sometimes they just a lot of times you, you might you might just feel it go boom. And then other times you feel it just pull. And they're treble hooks, so you know, I just swing up on them and hopefully they got it good enough to, to hold it. A lot of times, if you just kind of pitch it out there and kind of watch it, it'll, you'll kind of get the speed, the, how it's fast it's sinking, you know, and yeah. it'll kind of tell you what you need to be doing. Seems like when I do a full turn, it pulls it the same direction. Yeah, that's also a small, a, a little bait, so it, it's not, a, it's not going to take as much glide as the big ones. Right. A lot of times though, they hit it like when you're, it's just sitting completely still. Kind of like a jerk bait, yeah. you know? These kind of fade out too. So as they fade out, it, well, some of them do. That's a slow sink that you got. Yeah. Pretty sure. The slow sink ones are, uh, I, I like the slow sink ones the best, especially for the, the shell beds. 
and the river ledges. Yeah. Do you like let it sink or anything to begin with? No. Or it's just normally I'm throwing normally I'm throwing like on the shallow spot. Yeah. Like I said, the there's no problem for it for it to pull pull fish off of stuff, you know. Yeah. It's only like four feet under the water. I know if you get engage it quick enough, you can use it like a glide bait or a uh, wake bait around the top. Yeah, you can. I, I always tell people you have a problem finding it, or you're not really sure what your bait is doing, just raise your rod up and start cranking because it'll come up to the top. Yeah. But there's nothing for the fish to come up and eat that thing right off the surface. Yeah. In the cold, cold water. Oh, you got one? Yeah, it's a big dude. Oh, yeah. Big dude. Come on, baby. Get up here. Yeah. Holy cow. Let it go, dude. <laughs> That's a monster. <laughs> I'm going to lay him in the floor. Hold up. I'm going to get my bait in. <laughs> there we go. We're gliding, baby. <laughs> Oh yeah, man. That's what I'm screaming. That's, that's why. A... That's why we do this, bro. <laughs> that's a tanker. I need I'm, a there. I'm just trying to. I want to that's do... a tanker. Welcome to the glide world, my friend. Look at this. Holy cow! Look at this fish, guys. That's right. <laughs> Look at that fish. That's pretty. That's a chicken mock giant right there. <laughs> Let's see what she weighs. Uh, Look what he ate. That's one of the XPS glide baits. My first glide bait fish right there. That's the way to do it. That's the way to start out. That's a good that's a good addiction for you. Yeah. There you go. You gotta watch those, gotta watch those hooks, man. Cause they'll, uh, get you. they'll tweak out. Oh, okay. Let's lock her in here. Gotta be Number about one. seven, right? I don't think so. Uh, Six pounds and eight ounces. Six, eight, almost seven. That's a good way to start. Heck yeah, man. Six and a half pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Six, eight. Like you come glide baiting with Rip Rap Fishing Adventures, y'all. <laughs> come on. Let me get a link on it. It's 24 and a half. Hold on, I'll get a steel pick up. All right. Get you in this. Uh, get you in this somewhat. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's beautiful. Yes, sir. Boom. Haha, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> That's the way to start, man. All right, let's get release. I love getting releases of these giants. Bye bye. All right, first glide bait fish. Not a little... way to set the bar, man. Yeah. A little glide bait here. On the baby glide. Baby glide. <laughs> Man. <laughs> Alright. Alright. I see I see what you're talking about. <laughs> Look at that, something made it. Yeah, that's on those flats. They'll be on those flats today. That bright sun. Yeah. Just warming up. Yeah, it'll put them up there. A lot of food for the fish up on the flats. Now see that fish hit like right on the break off of the drop. So she was right, right there. And I preach a lot about that. Yeah. These creek systems and these flats, these little structure places that are on these creek channels and stuff, you really need to fish them. But they're a place that they stop and visit. Yeah. And they're hard bottom. Now see, we've only looking for five. Yeah. So there's one. Yeah. And we just started. So we got all day. I like flipping. I'm 
Flip them for five bigger. Well, I'm gliding for five bigger. <laughs> All right, guys, so what equipment should we use for these uh, glide baits? Okay, well, that depends on the glide bait you're using. Okay, if you're going to use a bigger one, uh, you know, the uh, 200, 175 to 250, you want a bigger rod, okay? Now, Billy suggested something around the 710 uh, heavy to extra heavy action. Um, I used this Abu Garcia Vengeance rod. This is my punching rod, and it was a 7.6 heavy action so and it did me okay now when you get to the smaller uh glide baits you can go to more your jerk bait rods or your cranking rods now i use for that one i use a 7.4 um savage gear uh medium heavy action rod and that did me well that's the one i caught that big one on and uh so that did me well now the line you want to use, optimally you want to use uh, monofilament. Um, not something I use a lot, but in this case it, it helps the, the lure to stay uh, upright uh, in the water column and, and not sink the lure nose down or anything like that. You want that, uh, Billy called it the natural buoyancy of the lure. Um, and not only that, but that monofilament also helps to absorb the shock when you go to set that hook you got treble hooks, but you got a stout rod. So you want something that's going to absorb some of that shock and uh, not rip those hooks out of the mouth of those big fish. As far as the reels that you want to use, um, Billy liked to use a slow gear ratio, uh, especially with those big ones uh, to cover a lot of water. You know, he would throw it way out there and those ones uh, you could just kind of crank slowly and they would have a good glide to them. Uh, because of that gear ratio. He also used some of the faster gear ratios, but when you use those faster gear ratios, you have to retrieve them slowly. Um, you know, uh, one click, one full turn, or a half a turn, depending on the size of your glide bait. The bigger the glide bait, the fuller the turn. Um, so when I'm throwing a, a, a big glide bait, I might want to do one full turn. I'm throwing a little glide bait, I might want to just do like a half turn or even a quarter turn depending on the gear ratio. If I have a high gear ratio, I want to turn that reel less. Uh, low gear ratio, I might be able to do a full turn or five to one continuously turn. The thing I preach to most people about these things is just don't overwork them. Yeah. They do most of the work for you. Take your time. And Fish over this structure stuff. That's the hardest thing, is just taking your time and slowing time. down. Yes. Uh, especially when you don't have confidence in something. That's right. You're going to fish it fast and you're not going to fish it like you should. Yeah. And you're, you're just expecting to move on to something else. But those glide baits, even from the tiniest one all the way up to like the 250 sizes, man, they're, they're still, they catch them. Yeah. All right, so the retrieve on these, uh, what I experienced on the water, the big glide baits, you could do a f uh, more of a full turn because they'll have that long glide, okay? So you'll have a long glide with this, okay? So you have to take up more line in order to change the, the direction and allow it to glide, okay? Um, so you wanna pay attention to that, that rod tip. So when I reel down, you're gonna you're gonna notice your your rod tip is gonna pull, and then you want to pause. So as soon as you feel that pull, you pause, and that what it's doing is turning that glide bait and then allowing it to glide, and that's what you want. Okay. Now the smaller glide baits, you know it, it's got it's gonna have a you know it's a smaller bait. It's gonna have a smaller glide. Okay. So you and not only that, but it's since it's smaller, you don't have to turn. You don't have to pull as much line to get it to turn. So that's why you're gonna have a less turn each time. So each time that you crank that reel, you're gonna notice you keep that rod tip steady and you're gonna notice a little pull, okay? And each time you see that, you see the pull and you pause. Pull, pause, and, and that will get, uh, you'll see the, the appropriate glide with that. Depending on how deep you're fishing your glide bait, you want, your, you want to hold your rod tip 
Um, you know, if you're trying to, to get it down deeper, you, you want your rod tip down and just keep it steady. If you're fishing in really shallow water, keep your rod tip up and that will keep that bait up or down depending on where your rod tip is positioned. Now, uh, Billy was really uh, specific on don't use your rod tip to pull that bait. You, what you want to do is just use that reel to pull the bait. And what that will do is um, allow it to glide appropriately and you're not going to ruin the action of that fish. Now I can use the rod tip by either having it up high or keeping it low uh, to keep that depth appropriate. Like a lot of sun shining back there on that flat. Yeah. That's the place we need to be. Sunshine. Sun so sun soaked banks. Mm -hmm. Do you do you uh do you find that you get a, a bunch off of lay downs and stuff like that? Yeah. You, you take you, it down the sides of yeah. it? Yeah. And lay downs scare me though because they there's big treble hooks to do to get in there and tangle up and break you off. And, yeah. But it's just a chance you take with yeah. anything. <laughs> a lot of people, you know, they, they look at the bank, they look at the trees, they're like, man, I want to go over and fish that bank. Well, you know what? It's a, I, fish this, I fish offshore a lot. Uh -huh. A lot of ditches, breaks, drops. I'm a more of a contour fisherman. Yeah, that's what this is. Contours on your maps. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a matter of finding that contour line where I'm getting more action. Yeah. I don't have a problem following, you know, way offshore if they're biting at four feet and that might be 200 yards off absolutely yeah yeah and this right here that's not that's five foot right there yeah five foot dropping into like you know 16. another thing that i tell my clients a lot you know is uh on this winter drawdown and when you have water in the 40s like we have now uh -huh. you know you you can you can usually see this five or six foot drop off it goes back down into 10. Yeah. Well, if you'll, if you'll uh, I'm gonna just hit that thing. Dang. If you'll, uh, if you'll just look off of that con that flat and look out into the open water sometimes, you'll see that a lot of those fish will just suspend straight out off of that, that uh, drop off. So yeah. if your drop off's at five or six, normally that's where a lot of those fish are gonna hang. It's just, uh, I don't know why that is. It just makes them comfortable just to slide off of that. Now, this glide bait works in all kinds of different places. Uh, you can throw it, you can pitch it into uh, docks. You can pitch it into lay downs. Um, of course, you're gonna have to worry about getting hung up or losing your bait in those cases. And obviously you don't wanna hit off people's boats. You wanna keep that in, in, in mind. But it also does really well covering flats. Um, he, um, Billy really preached about um, drop-offs and stuff like that so you may be fishing a flat but you, what you want to do is fish that edge where that flat goes and then drops off into that channel so you may be fishing the, the lure in three to five feet of water and then it's going to drop off into 10 15 or whatever that drop off right there bringing that lure from the shallow flat over that uh, drop off into the deep water is where you're going to get your big bites so you want to hang off the shallow water off that drop off and you want to throw into that shallow water and pull across that drop off um, if you have stumps and um, you know those types of things um, shell beds and that kind of thing on the edge that's even better and those are where you're gonna get your real big bites you also like to throw this thing down uh, bluffs uh, now he'd look for current breaks and those types of things um, in particular and just target those uh, except for um, the end of the year uh, you know, you have uh, October, November, and those those times he would fish that whole bluff. But um, you know, the other times of the years he he's only fishing those current breaks. Another good time to hit them docks is is like when they start that drawdown. When they start pulling the water down. Yeah. Those and deeper docks. September and October. <laughs> yeah. September, October, November. As much as these look like they're going back and forth and like they're feeding on on bass fry, these things gotta be good in post spawn. Well, they are. Especially get one that looks like a brim. Yep.
Now the optimal time to fish this bait seems to be in uh, mid-winter all the way through to the post-spawn. That seems to be the time where this bait really shines. However, Billy throws this all year long because he's, he's targeting those big fish. This is a big fish bait. It's not one you're gonna catch a lot of fish on. You might only get a handful of bites each day, but they're gonna be big bites. So that's the key. It's that you're, you're focusing on big fish and that's it. I mean, if you catch 10 fish on these baits during a day, you've had a really, really good day. What you're shooting for here is size. Yeah. That surprises people though, is just out of the blue. Boom. Do what? Just out of the blue, you get bit. You, yeah. you just, you go for a while, you're like, man, this sucks. And then all of a sudden, wham, one just mows it. <laughs> and then you're like, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So um, he would fish it all all year long and all day long. So hitting these target areas, these optimal places, and um, but it's a it's a lure that shines in that one particular time of the year. But it can catch them. It catches big ones all year long. So don't be afraid. He also said that the clearer the water, the better. Um, however, he would had he had a difficult time throwing it when the water clarity was two feet or less. Um, his his confidence would just go down on it, the more dingy the water. And uh, so the less visibility, the less he would throw it. Obviously these are these are pretty realistic looking baits. So, uh, and, and there's, there's others that look incredibly real. So clear the water, I mean, it looks like a real bait. So you're, you're gonna keep getting bites. Billy also liked to throw this when it was bright sunny. Um, he didn't, he said he, he didn't have as much luck when it was real cloudy or dark out. This is the third day we've had good sun. Yeah, I love the sun. I, I love the sun doing this. Yeah. I don't like to do it in the dark skies. I just, just don't, they just don't eat it as well. Man, when that sun's shining, though, they can, they can see it. They really come after it. More of a, a visual thing? I think so, yeah. The, the good thing about this bait is those times where it's difficult to get a bite, those high pressure, bright, sunny days, is when this bait seems to shine and you get those big bites. So um, while you're probably not getting many bites at all anyway, might as well throw this or, uh, or the big one. Um, you can get those, those uh, bites, those big bites, when the bite's not really happening anyway. So might as well try it out. That's the perfect little bait right there. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's, my, that's one of my favorite top three colors right there. Yeah, you told me the three colors I need to get, so I got one of them. Uh, I haven't got enough money for the others yet. <laughs> I'm planning on getting some more of the, what is this? This is what, Party Crasher? Or yeah. It? No, that's, I know. It. I know. It. Then there's Party Crasher, what else? Another one? The uh, Abalone Tag. Abalone Tag. Abalone tag. The thing about these baits though, they're they cool fish from a long way. Yeah. Like off of something. Yeah, I've seen them I've seen them come up like on parcel, I've seen them come up eighteen feet and hit a bait. Huh. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Now there are lots of different glide baits out there and they range from the cheapest uh, I've seen uh, are these XPS ones and they they run about 12 to 18 dollars depending on the size um, and heck I caught that big one on it so they work um, but I've seen them as much as eleven hundred dollars yeah you heard that right eleven hundred dollars um, now obviously yeah that's way out of my price range in fact approaching a hundred dollars is out of my price range so these uh they, they can run the gambit. You can get all kinds of uh, expensive ones, realistic ones, uh, and uh, uh, different sizes and that kind of thing. But Best Waiver seems to be a pretty good one. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it ranges in price from 15 to $40, depending on the size. The higher you go up in size, the more expensive it's gonna get. But for the price range, 
uh, and the quality of the bait, it seems to be a pretty good uh, lure. Uh, Billy was real confident with it. Uh, he liked the abalone shad, the I know it, and party crasher. He said those three colors will do do you good, and um, so no need to worry about getting every color in the in the uh, in the arsenal, every color available. Um, I like to go with those shad colors, um, and uh, uh, but I will be getting a brim shaped and brim colored one here, um, hopefully in the near near future. Maybe a a perch colored one. Um, those two seem to be um, have their niche, and they seem to get big bites, especially during the. Um, the post spawn period or the spawn period when they're uh, protecting those, uh, those their bass fry you want to throw those uh, brim um, the brim imitators and these those could get you really good bites all right now hopefully that information helps you out but uh, let's get back to the action we've got a couple more big ones to show you Oh no, he got off. Oh. oh gosh, man. I didn't even get to see him. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> I mean, he's hit it like three times. This is just a back hook heading right on like the bottom of the lip. Yeah. It really helps if they'll. If they'll Get both sets in them. Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm, just how big these baits are, it's probably easy to get leverage and throw them right once they get out of each swing. That was number two for us, man. That looked like a five pounder. That's the depth slots, my That looks good. That's a hundred ten dollar bait. It was exciting, you know, to you just get a bite. <laughs> but sometimes you don't even get a bite doing this. So that's two promising things, and it's still early. And this is better as the day goes. Really? <laughs> you ever fish these down bluffs or anything? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, a lot. Yeah. I had a monster of smallmouth come up after that. Like the down there fishing one day, uh, God, that was a big one. It was a six plus small. Yeah. God, it was a big one. It just totally missed. I didn't even see plain of that. I was fishing a fluke. And I threw it in the very back of that, that cove. It you know, couldn't have been more than four, four feet deep or so. And I saw something like kind of a shadow out there and I threw a fluke up there. It's a keeper. Yeah. <laughs> it's a on that depth. Yeah, that was up here on the flat too. Yeah. That transition. Yeah. Yeah, it's starting to climb on this. Climb on this. It's 17 inch, 16, 17 inches. Yeah, pretty fish. Yeah. Pretty fish. Keeper for sure. Oh, 
I thought he hit it. It went all over the side. Go back over. That one of those was about four pounds on the outside. There's, there's got to be a couple of them right in there. When is it too too dirty or too dingy to throw this? I'll be honest with you. If, if I can't see it at least a couple of feet, it's hard for me to throw. Boys are stuck in there like a hair in a biscuit. Lord God, please stay off. Don't come off, baby. Come on. Look at the size of this. I lost that one yesterday. Same place, dude. Yes. Look at that. There we go. Pliers. Yeah. Same exact spot. I'm glad we made the decision to come down this, yeah. this shell bed. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I show the camera now. It's a beautiful fish. Get up here, oh. Yeah! <laughs> Let me take this down. I hope this one, let's see how much it weighs. Beautiful fish. You want to you get a picture of it for you? Yeah. Take one for me. All right, gonna let me release this fish. Nice. That's a nice one. That's what you get on those glide baits right there. <laughs> All right. Yeah. There's two big ones. Finally. <laughs> there we go. Finally, that's been a long time coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Catch another. Five four thing. And a six eight. Dude, that throttled that thing. I mean throttled. I can't believe I missed what the net that first time. What happened? Like it just somehow, like right, right as it came up, he just came tearing yeah, it out. It, it didn't something weird, yeah. 
We got him. Yeah, we got him. All right, guys. Well, he said we had to commit to it, and I'm proud of myself because I threw it all day long. Didn't throw a uh, different bait uh, through. I have four glide baits, and I threw every one of them, and uh, caught that good one. And uh, so I'm happy with that. And I know it's. He said it, you know the bite was just a little bit off, but we we caught you know a handful of fish, and they're good quality fish. So that's what you're looking for. And definitely got me to where I have a lot more uh, faith and a lot more confidence. So definitely something I'm going to be throwing more in the future. All right, guys. Till next time. Tight lines. Old boys are stuck in there like a hair in a biscuit.